Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on an all new episode of American Round Ball. I'm Haley Outen. It's the final week of conference play in women's hoops and to break it down for us before we head off to Mohegan Sun for the conference tournament is our basketball analyst Monica McNutt who joins us via Skype. Monica, with the regular season coming to an end this week, what do you think the mindset is of the players as they get ready to pack their bags for the postseason? Well, it's got to be finished strong, Haley. Whether you love what you've been able to do in the 2017-2018 season or you hate it or you're somewhere in between, you want to finish on something that will give you some momentum heading into, one, the conference tournament, and then, two, even into the offseason, hey, saying, hey, look, this is the way we finish. This is the way we need to start next year. Well I, think the, well, I think a fun way, rather, to start off this show is by showing you all this clip at home of head coach Gino Oriyama. This is on Saturday before the Temple game. You see him right there. Coach getting his warm-up into a one-handed potty shot, makes it from half court. Monica, if you're the players and you watch coach hit that shot, what's going through your mind? Come on, man. You've absolutely <laughs> got to be kidding me. One hand, seriously. I don't know what Gino's fitness routine is, but I'm <laughs> sure they're not accustomed to seeing him hit that shot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of great action to look back at last week, highlighted by a big game in the state of Florida. The war on I-4 goes to USF, but they had to get it done in overtime, a very competitive game. Monica, what stuck out to you about this matchup? Well, there were two things that stuck out to me, Haley. One, I think it would be the grit and the competitive nature of the Knight squad. Coach Abe should be very proud of her group in that regard. In the fourth quarter, they had to battle back and close that gap. I love the defensive intensity that they brought. I love the focus on offense that they brought. They were determined to get good shots to put themselves in the best position to win. And uh, Leah Secondo was the analyst on the call who I've worked with in the past, and they were talking about how the Knights aren't necessarily a three-point shooting team, but if anybody was going to take that shot, it should have been Zakia Saunders, who finished the night with 31 points. So when she stepped up and hit that three that sent the game into overtime, I thought it was a tremendous demonstration in terms of focus and grit from the Knight squad. But on the flip side, you got to give the Bulls their credit as well. And I think most basketball folks will say the team that forces overtime typically has the momentum and may pull out the win if you had to call a game as the overtime period was beginning. But I think I tweeted this out. You couldn't really stick with that when it came to the Bulls. This is a team that is poised. This is a team that has continuity and they understand how to respond. So I thought while there was a tremendous display of grit from the night, I thought the Bulls just were so poised in that overtime period. Kitty Alexa, maybe not one of her signature games in terms of her efficiency. I think she was 5 of 15 from behind the arc, but she still finishes with 32 points. And the five shots she hit, oh, Haley, they were right on time. <laughs> well, with the conference tournament right around the corner, let's glance ahead to the big dance. Monica, what's the situation looking like for teams across the American as we look towards the postseason? Well, when you look at the larger conversation of women's college basketball bracketology, I think the American gets too uncomfortably this year. Um, somebody told me that the Huskies are on the bubble, but I don't know what game they've been watching. So UConn and the Bulls are probably in pretty comfortably. When I look at the standings, I think Houston is a team that could be in that bubble conversation. They received a vote in the AP coaches, or excuse me, in the coaches poll this week. Um, so they're a team that's starting to turn some heads. Now, what they'll have to do is really focus down the stretch in terms of the regular season and what they have left in conference play. They have an opportunity to take on the Bulls. And while it is daunting, it also would be a very, very solid win, not only for the standings, but also in terms of the larger picture in terms of them trying to get into the NCAA tournament. As a former player, what is the thought process like when you think NIT versus the NCAAs? So you're right, Haley. The NCAA comes with the special cord and it's black and it's blue and you get one shining moment. And of course, that is the goal of every college athlete. Even in high school, you want to be the kid that has a clip in one shining moment and you hope you're not the ones crying in the, in the montage, excuse me. But you do have to understand that this thing is a process. You don't jump up to the NCAA, okay? If you have to take the step and play in the WNIT, then you have to honor that. What it does give you that is hard to replicate if you don't have any postseason play is the duration and the length of a season that would include postseason play. So you take each opportunity as an opportunity to prepare. When I was at Georgetown, my sophomore year, mm, girl, my freshman year, we had no postseason play. So my sophomore year, when we go to the WNIT, we were thrilled. This was the first time that our program was going back to postseason for many of us on that roster. So you take full advantage of that opportunity. You continue to grow as a team and you prepare. 
sophomore year, oh girl, we were on and popping onto the NCAA tournament the rest of the way. But that year was definitely a pivotal year for our program. Looking ahead, which player are you looking for in the American to make a big impact in the final week of the regular season? Well, I got to go to the Cougars and I got to think of Coach Ron Huey squad. I think of Angela Harris and she's in a very unique spot in that if she doesn't make a big splash, but she gives me a steady splash and her three other teammates who are averaging double digits also give a little splash, then as a collective group, I think that Houston is poised to maybe surprise some folks down the stretch. Now, the last three games that they have in conference play are no joke. So I will be make sure that we take note of that. But I think Harris, as the head of the snake for the Cougars, really can do some special things. You mentioned Houston has a tough week ahead. Um, what are they preparing for in this final week of the seeding with conference tournament seeding on the line? So they'll play on Wednesday, Saturday, and Monday, which is not unique in that quite a few of the teams in the American the rest of the way have that schedule. But they will go to USF. They will host a home game uh, with UCF, and then they go to Cincinnati. So you talk about the top four-ish teams in the conference if you take Houston out of the mix, the top five. They've got really a gauntlet to finish out the rest of the way, but they have to take full advantage of their game at home. And I also think that they have to watch the film in terms of what the Knights were able to do to USF. Houston is a team that's leading the conference when you talk about steals. They're nationally ranked in steals. I believe they're seventh in the country. So if they can really get their defense going and really pull energy from what they can do on the defensive end, you've got to figure out a way to frustrate Loxley. You can't yet let Jesperson get into a groove. You've got to keep an eye on Flores. If they can figure out a way to slow the Bulls down and what Coach Jose Fernandez does, on the defensive end, I think the offense will come to them because some teams just sort of derive so much energy from what they're able to do on the defensive end that offense becomes a piece of cake. Looking forward to seeing how the standings shake out in the week ahead, Monica. Only one more episode left of American Round Ball, and so we'll see you in here next Wednesday for that. Yes, ma'am, and then after that, we'll be up in Connecticut for the tournament. I'm really excited. It should be a good one. That's right. Well, following next week's final episode of American Round Ball, we will be heading to Mohegan Sun for the conference tournament. So until then and throughout the tournament, you can always follow along daily on Twitter at American underscore WBB. Enjoy the last week of the regular season.